Good evening and welcome to the American Academy of Nursing's 2020 Virtual Induction Ceremony. I am Eileen Sullivan Marks and it is my honor to serve as the Academy's President. With me tonight, and appropriately socially distant, is the Academy's President-elect Ken White, who is the co-host for tonight's very unique celebration. This evening, we will honor the excellence and committed service of nurses from around the world who will join our organization as fellows. It's an honor to, to be here. Eileen, I never would have imagined that we'd be inducting 230 new fellows in your magnificent home. The COVID-19 pandemic has created many challenges to how we engage with one another and it has also created opportunities for us to celebrate in new ways. This year's induction ceremony will be live streamed on YouTube, so friends, family, and colleagues are able to share in the excitement of the ceremony and to offer notes of congratulations and pride in real time. This year, we will hear from the incoming fellows in their own words. Nursing is a profession that places compassion and science at the center of our work to actively improve health and healthcare worldwide. Tonight, we will induct fellows from 38 states, the District of Columbia, the United States Territory of Guam, as well as from 13 countries around the world. We will also pay tribute to some remarkable nurses, all recipients of the Academy's 2020 awards, and of course, we will celebrate the visionary leaders who will become honorary fellows of our organization. This year, we had the opportunity to use a similar virtual format to honor this year's 2020 living legends. Linda Aiken, Bobby Berkowitz, Kitty Buckwalter, Beverly Malone, and Marilyn Rance. If you missed the celebration of the incredible life's work of these distinguished honorees, Please do watch it later on the Academy's YouTube page. Before we begin, I would like to personally thank the trailblazing and courageous leaders whose vision and dedication helped build the American Academy of Nursing. The mark of a strong organization is the people who volunteer their time and energy to leadership roles, including those who have helped elevate the Academy by serving on the board of directors, committees, and expert panels. I am proud to be the president of this organization at this critical time in history and know that we stand on the shoulders of giants of the profession. From the charter members of this organization, the inaugural cohort of fellows in 1973, to our past presidents, I am grateful that their vision, influence, and commitment to mission helped grow the Academy and the impact of nursing to new heights. To start our evening festivities, it is my honor to present this year's Civitas Award. This award recognizes an individual who exemplifies extraordinary dedication to excellence in promoting quality care. Reflecting on the incredible impact the pandemic has had on individuals, families, and communities around the globe, nursing's international presence remains consistently paramount. It is my honor to name Dr. Stephanie Ferguson, a name synonymous with the voice of nursing at numerous international leadership tables as the 2020 Civitas Award recipient. The founder, CEO, and president of Stephanie L. Ferguson and Associates, a visiting fellow at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health and consulting associate professor at Stanford University, Dr. Ferguson's striking career personifies leadership and a steadfast commitment to the patients nurses serve. Dr. Ferguson has worked in over 100 nations as a technical advisor, consultant, and facilitator for organizations including the World Health Organization and the International Council of Nurses. For more than 20 years at the WHO headquarters and regional offices, Dr. Ferguson developed strategic plans and initiatives to strengthen and evaluate global healthcare delivery systems, population health outcomes, and leadership programs for health professionals. 
Dr. Ferguson helped steward the consensus study on global health and the future of the USA at the National Academy of Medicine, both of which are foundational to health policy today. Stephanie Ferguson's selfless commitment to championing the voice of nursing and improving population health outcomes so that all people can live their healthiest life possible makes us proud to have her as a fellow of the Academy and the recipient of the Civitas Award. Let's hear from Dr. Ferguson. Good evening. My name is Dr. Stephanie Ferguson. Thank you, Dr. Sullivan Marks, members of the Board of Directors, Dr. Suzanne Miyamoto, and fellow fellows. It is an honor to receive the 2020 Civitas Award. Thank you for your leadership. Global nursing leadership has never been more important than it is right now. In the WHO's 2020 Year of the Nurse and the Midwife, nurses' character has been revealed. Our greatest strength, our trustworthiness, has helped us not only survive but also thrive in these challenging and uncertain times. At a moment when events have conspired to throw everything off course, nurses have stepped in to meet challenges and save lives. Their selfless work has focused the world's attention on the power and potential of nurses to address major health challenges. But in order to continue to lead with purpose, we must widen our lens and focus on equally pressing issues on the horizon, as spelled out in the WHO's recent State of the World Nursing Report. We must find ways to enhance leadership capacity, increase every country's ability to retain a well-paid nursing workforce, and invest in nursing education, skill building, and employment. I believe we are at a turning point, a tipping point, a point at which history demands the best we have to offer. The time is right for better support, better investment, and better resourcing of the nursing and midwifery professions. How can we get there? By working together, taking risks, speaking out, and using our collective influence to amplify the voice of nursing and drive meaningful change by insisting on and taking our seat at the table. As the late civil rights icon John Lewis said, be hopeful, be optimistic, never be afraid to make some good noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. It's time for nurses everywhere to embrace good trouble and strengthen the future of our profession. Thank you. I now have the opportunity to present the 2020 Healthcare Leader Award. This award recognizes an influential national leader dedicated to improving the health of the nation through contributions to organizational excellence. The American Academy of Nursing is honored to recognize Sheila Burke, Chair of Baker Donaldson Government Relations and Public Policy Group and faculty at the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University with this award. Over the course of her illustrious career, she has been a true testament to the impact nurses can have in shaping health policy at all levels of government. Throughout her tenure on Capitol Hill, Ms. Burke always placed the needs of the patient first while serving in prominent leadership roles, such as the Chief of Staff to former Senate Majority Leader Bob Dole, Deputy Staff Director of the Senate Finance Committee, and the elected Secretary of the Senate. Her ability to negotiate across the aisle allowed the Senate to advance key legislative issues related to Medicare, Medicaid, and the maternal and child health programs. Her expertise in federal payment models was a vital asset to the federal government when she served as a member of the Medicare Payment Advisory Commission. Sheila Burke has also been a leading voice to cultivate history, culture, and science. Through her role as the Deputy Secretary and Chief Operating Officer of the Smithsonian Institution, she helped ensure the education and enrichment of countless individuals from around the globe. Sheila is a fierce champion whose work has resulted in a lifetime of advocacy for improved health and health equity. We are honored to have her as a Fellow of the Academy 
and the recipient of this year's Healthcare Leader Award. Let's hear from Sheila Burke. My thanks and gratitude to the Academy for this remarkable honor. Uh, to be recognized by one's peers holds particular importance and value. When I was first elected to the Academy in 1984, I had very little sense of the direction of my career and what direction it might take. But I've been blessed with the opportunity to be engaged in work that has exposed me to some of the best minds in nursing specifically and in healthcare generally. Those minds are being challenged as never before to help us address the problems that our nation faces. It would be hard to find a nurse who does not believe that nursing ought to be provided to those in need without any political considerations. Our dedication to the public and clearly their need is deeply ingrained and felt. This comment was made by Mary Kelly Mullane in an article in Nursing Outlook in 1975. The truth of that statement is certainly relevant today, evidenced by the commitment of nurses on the front line of the pandemic that's confronting our nation. In her article, Nursing Care in the Political Arena, she argued for the importance of nursing taking its place at the table when decisions are being made. She argued that we must be serious students of social needs, activists in influencing policy to meet those needs. Few know more than we do. She is speaking to us again today. As members of the Academy, you are looked upon your colleagues as leaders. Your strength is in knowing the implications of the failures of our healthcare system and the impact of the failure to put faith in our scientists. Your strength is also in the trust the public places in us to speak the truth, to be calm in this crisis and indeed lead with purpose. The theme of this meeting should in fact be our motto, just as be calm and carry on was reported to be the motto for some in the past. You must speak out, you must engage, you must vote. We are certainly facing the most consequential election of our lifetimes, and we absolutely must be heard. Stand up and be counted. And again, my thanks to the Academy for all of their support over the years and recognizing much that has to be done by all of us. Thank you again. Our final award to be given this evening is the 2020 President's Award. This award recognizes an individual who has made extraordinary lifelong contributions to improving the physical and mental health of individuals, families, and communities. This recognition is the highest individual achievement award given by the Academy. I am truly honored to award this year's recipient, Rear Admiral Susan Orsega. Rear Admiral Orsega's career is the epitome of public service in the pursuit of global health where the wellness of individuals and communities is paramount. She has been a commanding voice helping to direct the on-the-ground coordination of the United States Public Health Service Corps' response during the novel coronavirus pandemic. One area of her critical focus has been directing work in the field hospitals and within the Southwest Native American communities who have suffered significantly with COVID-19 outbreaks. Admiral Orsega is the principal advisor to the Surgeon General on activities and policies related to training, deployment, and total force fitness. But COVID-19 was not the first public health crisis she faced. Susan Orsega began her career in the United States Public Health Service in 1989 at the National Institutes of Health as the HIV AIDS epidemic was unfolding. Since then, her public health emergency experience has ranged from her selection to an elite medical team after 9-11, as well as her completion of 14 other national and international disaster humanitarian deployments. In 2015, 
Rear Admiral Orsega was appointed to the NIH Ebola Trial Operations Team, and from 2016 to 2019, she served as the Chief Nursing Officer of the United States Public Health Service Corps. Her voice, her authentic leadership, and her clear success of directing teams through crisis is truly remarkable. She is the embodiment of a true public servant and an ideal leader. We are honored to have her as a Fellow of the Academy and the recipient of this year's President's Award. Let's hear from Rear Admiral Orsega. Thank you so much. I am deeply honored to receive the American Academy of Nursing President's Award. I want to thank the United States Public Health Service Commission Corps for the opportunities, experiences, and collaborations established throughout my career. The Corps is the safety net for underserved populations. It's a mobile, duty-bound group of 6,100 uniformed health officers willing to go anywhere at any time to meet the nation's most urgent public health needs. Throughout my career, I've experienced richness beyond words from a deployment to New York on September 11th to the multitude of international assignments at the National Institutes of Health, and now in my current role as Commission Corps Headquarters Director responsible for operations for the largest historic deployment of our officers. I am truly thankful for my mentors in my life and in my family. And without their motivation and inspiration, I would not be here today. Doctors Miyamoto and Sullivan Marks, your purposeful leadership is appreciated by us as you lead the way in the academy. Our engagement together from the patient room to the convention room is pivotal to address the health of populations and our profession across this great nation and world. Advancing the health of this great nation is no easy task for us. And whether it's working at clinics, institutions, or organizations, at the bedside to the boardroom, the impoverished or the imprisoned, or in urban or rural settings, all of us play a fundamental role in the cauldron of healthcare. But we need to view ourselves in this light. And I want to particularly acknowledge the unsung heroes who've been on the front lines. COVID-19 has impacted everything in our lives, our health, our work, our play, and our relationships. We have to remain on guard as warriors. The importance of our role in advocating for flu vaccines is just one way to help reduce the burden on the healthcare system as we're battling a new wave of COVID-19. It's incumbent upon us to raise our voices in communities of greatest needs, and COVID-19 is the backdrop. One thing this disease has made abundantly clear is how small our planet is, how interconnected we are, and how much we need to work across the profession to address this complex public health crises. May we strive to live up to the generation of nursing leaders who came before us and use our strengths to find our inroads to shift the nation to a state of wellness and health care for all and to be the champions for change. Thank you. Congratulations and thank you so much, Rear Admiral Orsega. Now it is time to begin our induction ceremony. This night would not have been possible without the time, energy, and passion of our Academy's Fellow Selection Committee. This year, the committee was led by David Keepnews as chair with Jane Swanson and Debbie Chapman Bryant. As a former member of the Fellow Selection Committee, I know the very difficult task the committee members have in reviewing the many stellar applications. This year, the committee reviewed 370 applications and selected 230 new fellows. I also wanted to take a moment to recognize and thank the new fellows sponsors. Being a fellow sponsor is an important role for this organization. Sponsorship signifies their commitment to identifying talent, supporting nursing leadership, and paying forward the gift we all received from our sponsors during this process. 
As I mentioned tonight, we will hear from the fellows themselves. We posed three questions to our newest cohort, including, how do you hope your work will shape the public's health in the future? How do you think the collective strength of nursing can impact health policy? And what does it mean to you to be a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing? What is the greatest lesson you learned during your career? To learn more about the new fellows, their amazing accomplishments are captured in depth on the conference website for you to review after tonight's event. Without further ado, on with the celebration of nursing excellence. Alabama. Heather Carter Templeton. Nurses have always been an integral part of our healthcare system. Our input and experiences have and will continue to richly inform and influence health policy. As champions for high quality care, we as nurses are poised to have a positive impact on the quality of care that we can provide. James Dion Odom. I think one of the single greatest challenges that our U.S. healthcare system faces right now is how to best support families who support uh, adults and children with serious illness. And I'd really like to see my work have an impact on how health systems integrate uh, formal assessment and support for these individuals who care for our patients. Ashley Hodges. In my clinic for survivors of human sex trafficking, I developed and implemented a modified trauma-informed care model. Our patients can come to us with a history of trauma in a variety of settings. It's my hope that my work, one form practice, will change the way that we view trauma and the way that we care for our patients. Sigrid Ladores. Being a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing, signifies not only a milestone in professional achievement, but also a testament to what grit and sacrifice can accomplish. As a Filipino American who immigrated to the US as a teen, I am proud to join highly accomplished nurses from all over the world. And I share this honor with my parents who sacrificed so much to give me a chance at a better life. Lori Leosi. I know the work begins now to work with others who are positioned to make a difference in our community, in our healthcare systems, and in the patient and quality care that we provide. Our educational system has been one of the, the areas that we've been able to improve the most in simulation over the last decade, and is even more vital now in this pandemic. Adelas Markaki. In this International Year of the Nurse and Midwife that is so dramatically underscored by the COVID-19 pandemic, the collective strengths of nursing lie within partnerships. Partnerships are paramount for enabling the Nursing Now campaign agenda to impact health policy. Arkansas. Sarah Jones. My research aims to develop a national mental health care service model for those that daily serve our communities, first responders, funded and designated as high program priority by the National Institute of Mental Health. This research will make an impact on mental health care for this at-risk population and spotlight the need for action. Leanne Leffler. I refer to my work as a new frontier that is using technology to support patients to self-manage their chronic disease. There is untapped potential in improving public health by using technology in healthcare. California. Julie McGowan Boyt. The greatest lesson I've learned in my nursing career has been in the area of resiliency, not giving up when it gets really difficult. And there have been many challenges we've faced along the way in starting hospice care within Western Kenya. But for the thousands of patients and families who now have benefited from the care, I'm so grateful that we didn't give up too soon. Michelle Kamisha. I hope my work will help change the paradigm of healthcare, shifting to a patient and family integrated model 
In this paradigm, we incorporate the philosophy of rehabilitation nursing to view the patient and millions of family caregivers across the globe in the context of their family unit, considering the contextual biopsychosocial and ecological factors that are instrumental in creating healthy communities. Jim Delfonso. To me, fellowship is both a prodigious professional honor and a call to informed moral action. It's a unique opportunity to honor those nursing superheroes who have encouraged and inspired me throughout my career, to make a difference and to pay it forward through purposeful activism, persevering to advance the Academy's noble mission and strategic priorities. Anne O'Brien. I hope my work and the collective work of nursing informatics will shape the public's health through improved access to information such as social and behavioral determinants of health to improve overall health equity and population health. Lisa Roberts. Collectively, nurses have the breadth and depth of experience and expertise to address patient and healthcare issues. As the largest cadre of healthcare providers in the world and those closest to the patients, we must tell our stories to policymakers and be the advocates for those without voice. Jan Ching Zhang. Nursing is the nation's largest healthcare profession. With accomplished leaders from bedside to boardroom, from community to academia, from local to national elected officials, AAN is best positioned to lead the collaboration across all nursing organizations and collectively impact health policy. Canada. Sandra Davidson. Becoming a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing is so significant to me. It means I have a connection and uh, potential collaborations with brilliant, dedicated nurses from around the world. And together we can create a better world and better health for everyone. Nicole Latorno. To better protect young children's health and development over their lifetimes, I have devoted my career to finding ways to support families and children struggling with stressors such as depression, addictions and family violence. My new ATTACH program, which stands for Attachment and Child Health, will be that supportive program that will shape children's families and by extension the public's health. Martina Putz. Um, my work focuses on older adults with cancer and this population, um, older adults with cancer, is growing rapidly in most countries of the world and they've been very underrepresented in research, so I'm hoping that my research will contribute to improving and maintaining their health and well-being during and after treatment. Janet Squires. I do implementation science research that aims to improve the health of the public. I do this by implementing best evidence and by de-implementing outdated and potentially harmful healthcare practices. I lead international research teams examining the role of context and implementation interventions that address high priority evidence practice gaps. Sabrina Wang. I hope to shape public health through increasing antimicrobial stewardship using a One Health approach and implementing a data platform based on community data. 2020 American Academy of Nursing Fellows. Congratulations on this well-deserved honor. You guys inspire all of us, all of us to be the best version of ourselves, to help other people and to leave the world a better place. Your valiant efforts in making significant positive changes do not go unnoticed. Thank you for all that you do to advance health policy and practice in both crisis and calm. China. Lei Ping Zhang. As a nursing leader and educator, I believe each of us is a unique example to help people and promote their health with our effort. When we work together, I believe we should have a chance to make a difference. Yang Jiang. Professionalism, dedication, and excellence 
on what I have learned and have been practicing in my career. No matter in good times or bad, never give up now and hope. It should become the retention and benchmark of our career as nurses. Zhang Hongli. To become a new fellow of the American Academy of Nursing needs the recognition for my research capacity and leadership potentials. And it also means the encouragement and the responsibility to advance nursing profession, especially in China. Xiao Mei Li. I'm honored to be the new fellow of AAN, which recognized my past and encouraged me for the future. I hope to reshape the public health through perception to action, particularly from psychosocial perspectives, in order to pave the way for prevention, detection, diagnosis, and treatment of different psychosocial health problems. Ying Long Li. As an experienced nursing manager, I understand thoroughly the importance of nursing literacy. In the context of globalization, we should strive to build consensus, be ready for change, and take actions to influence health policy and promote ANA's wishes. Zhang Li. 2020 is a special year. The great power and outstanding performance of nursing communities in fighting this COVID-19 received wide attention from health field and society. I'm sure this will impact health policy changes in improving the quantity and the quality of nurses. Zhang Lu. I'm so honored to join this distinguished academy family. It is great recognition for me and it will also offer me a good platform to communicate with international nursing colleagues. I would consider this as an important starting point to make every effort to promote nursing education and research, to enrich the body of nursing knowledge, and improve the quality of clinical nursing. Shomaya Shanga. In my opinion, my work focuses on aging care. My research findings will improve nursing practice, and I will establish a cooperation with international university and hospitals in order to promote public health. Ka Fang Wang. I hope I can continue to influence health policy by carrying out innovations in nursing education and translating knowledge into practice. I will especially implement the integrated care model to improve quality of life for old adults. Jin Wan Wu. I value my leadership position to collaborate with you to expand nursing science, focus on global care and culture considerations, and to promote nurses' engagement in policy making. I'm thrilled to be inducted as a new fellow of the American Academic of Nursing. I hope to do more impactful nursing research to more healthcare providers and mothers to promote breastfeeding and natural births, making the maternal and the infant world healthy in the future. Ji Hang Ye. In my nearly 40 years of nursing career, my biggest experience is change. The nursing profession has developed through constant change. So we must continue to embrace change. Ya Queen Zhang. I will continue to push domestic and international collaborative nursing research innovation and nursing management along with our nursing team in order to make meaningful, steady, and sustainable development in nursing discipline. Thank you. Connecticut. Beth Beckman. The current pandemic and social unrest calls for nurses to lead through chaos. Our nation is seeking a reliable source for information and action. Nurses are great at creating order out of disorder, 
We're four million strong, and we have an unwavering trust of our public. Our voices at the national and state health care policy tables should be deemed essential and expected. Ellen Blair. One of the greatest lessons I've learned during my career is that the specialty of psychiatric nursing applies not only to patients in behavioral health care settings, but transcends all specialties of nursing. Forming a therapeutic nurse-patient relationship with our patients is truly at the center of what we do as nurses. Mary Blankson. I hope the contributions that I am making with regard to the role of the primary care registered nurse will impact and enhance university curriculum and advance payment models to include reimbursement for valuable nursing care management services. This will solidify the advancement of this role nationally to engage our complex chronically ill patients as they move incrementally towards self-management. Marianne Davies. 2020, the year of the nurse and COVID-19, this global pandemic has placed nurses at the forefront of innovation and healthcare delivery. Now, more than ever, nurses have an opportunity to capitalize on the public's trust to challenge existing systems and policy and use the momentum, momentum collectively to redesign healthcare systems to advocate for safe and equitable care to all populations. Joan Carney. The greatest lesson I've learned in my career is that knowledge building, whether it be in research, clinical practice, or any other endeavor, doesn't happen through a single lens, but rather in this dance of converging and diverging schools of thought from many different quarters. I learned this very early on in my interdisciplinary training, and it has stayed with me. Karen Myrick. It is my hope that my work will shape the public's health by advancing the science of nursing and in an effort to decrease the time to accurate diagnoses. Also to encourage intervention and or prevention for athletic and or sports injuries and conditions. Diane Tracy Marindola. I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner and public health nurse. Working with low resourced communities is at the heart of my nursing career. I hope to leverage our nation's trust in nursing to reduce suffering and improve health outcomes locally, nationally, and around the world. Delaware. Catherine Hout. I was excited to be one of the pioneers in the advancement of the acute care nurse practitioner role through the development of the acute care certification and educational programs. Acute care pediatric nurse practitioners continue to impact children and their families and the expert care they provide. Denmark. Benty Thorp Jensen. To improve public health, I've championed one of the current academy initiatives to reduce patient, provider, and system burden by shifting the surgical paradigm to include prehabilitation strategies to promote enhanced recovery after for surgical patients and reduce post-operative impairment. District of Columbia. Marianne Hilliard. This ceremony is important because high quality healthcare offered safely and in a timely manner cannot be taken for granted. Martin Luther King urged us to be hopeful when he said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Together, we will lift the collective voice of nurses in order to promote population health and health equity for every soldier, every citizen, every family member, every friend. Joan Wasserman. Nurse clinicians and scientists working together to conduct translational research using big data, genomics, and other advanced methods can have a significant impact on health policy and the health of the nation. It is my distinct honor and absolute privilege to recognize our next honorary fellow, Dr. Anthony S. Fauci. Dr. Fauci is a renowned public health authority. 
millions of Americans have turned to him for information as the coronavirus pandemic has worsened throughout the year. Advising six presidents during his tenure, he is the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases at the National Institutes of Health. Dr. Fauci's extensive portfolio includes conducting research to prevent, diagnose, and treat infectious diseases such as HIV AIDS, respiratory infections, tuberculosis, and malaria, as well as emerging diseases, including Ebola, Zika, and the coronavirus. He was a principal architect of the president's emergency plan for AIDS relief during George W. Bush's administration, serving as the leading voice during the HIV and AIDS crisis. His contributions to understanding how HIV destroys the body's defenses and developing treatments has enabled countless individuals to live with HIV as a chronic illness rather than the death sentence it once was. With strong conviction, Dr. Fauci's authentic leadership addressed homophobia head on, and through his work, he is considered a hero by AIDS activists. In all aspects of his storied career, and as we have seen as a member of the White House's Coronavirus Task Force, Dr. Fauci has wholeheartedly dedicated himself to furthering better health outcomes and preventing disease. I had the distinct pleasure to sit down and talk with Dr. Fauci about his vision for the future, leading during an unprecedented crisis and how we as nursing experts can continue to help champion the voice of science in national and global conversations. Congratulations, Dr. Fauci, on becoming an honorary fellow in the American Academy of Nursing. It is such a thrill always to have a fellow's join us as yourself, a physician, a colleague, and an esteemed distinguished professor. So I'm so glad that we can honor you and that you were able to spend some time today with us on what we're calling our fireside chat. I'd like to ask you to reflect on our policy conference theme, which is in crisis and calm leading with purpose. So you certainly have done that. And as, as you think, what advice as you become an Academy Fellow, will you want to impart with um, nurses in our fellowship to lead with purpose, advance resiliency as we deal with the uncertainty of this current pandemic? Well, thank you very much, Aline. Uh, first of all, it's a really a great pleasure and an honor to be made an honorary fellow uh, of your organization. Uh, it really is, and I, and I appreciate your bestowing that on me. Uh, the words that you mentioned, I think, are really critical to how we all now, whatever our profession, but certainly nurses and physicians and healthcare providers and even public health officials, is that when you are in a crisis what, that we are in right now, and this is a bona fide crisis, this is the worst respiratory disease pandemic we have had in 102 years, we've all got to be, one, guided by the science and evidence that essentially directs our policies, our decisions, and our recommendations. But since we are in an evolving situation, things are much different now than they were in January and February when we were just beginning to learn about the scope of the outbreak, to be humble enough and flexible enough that as further information becomes available, you can modify the things you do based on the currently available information. So it's a combination of rising to the crisis, rising to the challenge, but being very flexible because this is not a static situation we're in. And if we as health professionals, be they nurses or physicians, follow that, I think that will be an important example for the rest of the country. Certainly when you think about the adjustments that practicing nurses had to make um, and are still making as we learn more about the disease and other diseases that you've dealt with like HIV AIDS, what we knew in the beginning evolved, emerged and changed. And I think, you know, this 
is something that we have to teach upcoming nurses, medical students at this point, that the world will be constantly having to adjust to new pressing health problems. If you're thinking five years ahead now, what are some pressing health problems that you think we need to prepare those students for? Well, I'm, first of all, there are the more chronic diseases that have been present that we haven't addressed adequately. And then there is the risk of emerging new diseases. As the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, um, I myself focus, as I should appropriately, upon preparedness for the next unexpected outbreak. So I would think that since I don't want to be provincial, because I, I do know that nurses and physicians worry about a lot of other things besides emerging infectious diseases, that we've got to look in society at what the things are right now that are really problems in society. Things like obesity, I think, is important. Uh, to me, the disparities in health. I mean, if there's anything that has I wouldn't say jolted me, but really impressed me because I've seen it with other diseases is the extraordinary disparity among African-Americans and Latinx, not only in the incidence and prevalence of getting COVID-19, but in the underlying comorbidities that render them highly susceptible to a severe outcome, including hospitalization. So if we could look at ways as health professionals to address some of the social determinants of health and be advocates for addressing the social determinants of health, I think that would be a powerful message because it's not something we're going to turn around tomorrow or next month or next year. It's something that I often get reminded by my wife, who is a nurse, that these things probably start even before you're born. Uh, we've got to make sure that we in the health professions, that we make it very clear that these are as important as some of the things that I do with regard to infectious diseases. But as always, finally, we always got to be prepared for the next unexpected outbreak. Absolutely. And use our imagination as, as, as we anticipate what might um, be there. And of course, um, when you talk about um, nursing and all of us in healthcare, it's it's the public and the health of the population, the health of society, and it it really is family and community. And right now, you know, as we talk to families, communities, populations about the best way to think of of moving forward in the pandemic, basic, simple health practices that in some ways go back to any society where you had grandmothers and grandfathers saying, you know, cover your mouth with a mask, wash your hands, stay at a distance, you know, in the winter time, be careful, things spread. But that message um, is something that may or may not always rest easily with people in modern times because we're so used to technology, we're so used to the fact that we can handle everything. And so one of the things that we're thinking of in the academy and nursing is how do we make sure that the public hears these important messages and understands them, particularly as we anticipate a vaccine? What advice do you have for how yeah. to communicate or better and broadly with everyday people? Well, you know, that's a very good question, and I'm glad it's being asked in the context of nursing, and I'll explain why. I mean, obviously, there are things that we know now, and I have five of them that I talk about all the time. Universal wearing of masks, maintaining a distance, avoiding congregate settings, crowds, particularly indoor, not wearing masks, do things outdoors much more preferentially to indoors. I know that's going to be difficult as the weather gets cooler. And as you said, washing your hands frequently. One of the problems with that is that in our society right now, there really is a pushback on authority. And there's a, a combination of an anti-science, anti-authority approach that has led to what I think is a politicization of public health measures. They should never, ever 
fall into the realm of politics and ideology. The one thing that I've always felt, you know, from the time, maybe even before I was in medical school, but even during medical school, my multiple years of internship and residency and chief residency and fellowship, et cetera, is who do you trust in society? And I would venture to say, hopefully not insulting any other groups, that nurses are probably, in my mind, some of the most trusted members of society. Uh, it's just that way. It's almost inherent to the profession of nursing. Mm -hmm. So I would think that if nurses became vocal and visible about talking about the things that would be done, you know, I cannot imagine somebody pushing back. I can see pushing back on people who authoritatively think they're leaders in medicine or what have you. But when nurses, particularly the leaders in the nursing profession, do that, boy, I, I cannot think of, of a better group to do that than nurses. So maybe that's a message we should give to the younger generation of nurses coming up. They do have a role in public policy because they are an incredible, they are an entirely credible group. Thank you again so much, Dr. Fauci, for taking the time to be with us today uh, as we honor you as a new fellow in the American Academy of Nursing. But wait, even though we've had time to chat, let's go on for more conversation. As our fellows know, during our induction ceremony, we often invite family and friends of our new fellows to celebrate with us. And today, we're absolutely thrilled to be able to introduce with Dr. Anthony Fauci, Dr. Christine Grady, who is a fellow in our academy, a member of our bioethics expert panel and a nurse bioethicist, and who happens to be married to Dr. Fauci. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Good to be with you. So during these times of uh, a long career where there's overlap as well as thinking of how important it is to be an expert in your fields, I'm wondering about any um, uh, thoughts you have for supporting one another, but also for leading forward during challenging times um, like the pandemic and, and how you can be supportive in, in your examples to other fellows and other healthcare providers. So I think we certainly support each other in, in the various endeavors that we independently take on, but some of, there's some of them that overlap. And we also support each other, you know, for the, the regular needs that we all have, like making sure that we eat and sleep and walk and exercise and things like that together. So it's really been absolutely essential for, for me right. to have his support during this time. And I, I hope I've given him the same support that, that I'm getting. Well, I can say uh, categorically that I don't think I would have been able or even to this day would be able to do the kinds of things that I have to do given the intensity of the uh, of not only the workload, but the stress associated with trying to navigate through this historic pandemic. And uh, I can recall very easily, and I use it as an example, that in the early months of the spring, when things were exploding in New York City, the New York metropolitan area, which you know, accounted for about 40% of all of the cases, hospitalizations, and deaths in the entire country that I was working, you know, literally with no hyperbole, not 24-7, uh, but certainly seven and maybe 18, 19 hours a day, not sleeping and not eating. And it was only uh, Chris, Christine, who I, who I listened to because of her extraordinary good sense and grasp of a situation that I get back to some form of normality. I probably would not have done that if she didn't sit down with me and say, you know, you're in a marathon and you're running like you're on a sprint. And I don't think anybody else in my world, in my circle, could have told me that, that I would not have listened as carefully as I did to Christine, because she knows me. She knows the field. She's involved with it herself. 
So she knew that she couldn't say just stop because I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> but I needed to pull back a bit. And I did it because of her good counsel. That's, that's absolutely uh, terrific uh, to know. And I know that all of us in healthcare have been able to be supported by families. And so one last uh, thought that you might have is um, as you're uh, looking forward to whenever we could meet again uh, in person uh, for the uh, Academy meetings, we look forward to uh, having you there. And I'm wondering what you might be thinking about um, joining our policy conference and what kind of ways you hope to learn more. You? <laughs> well, um, uh, I usually go. You know, go ahead. <laughs> no, I usually come to the policy conference, so I'm already part of it. And part of, as, as you said, Dr. Sullivan Marks, I'm on the bioethics expert panel. And actually this year I'll be talking to uh, that panel on Saturday and uh, joined by a couple of other panels who, who wanted to be part of the conversation. So um, I will definitely continue to be part of the Academy's activities. I don't know what Tony's well, future looks like. <laughs> it, it depends what I'm doing at the time, but I, I can say quite honestly, and I'm not saying it only because of the occasion that we're in at this moment that I learned an extraordinary amount uh, at policy levels from Christine. Uh, you know, she has an extraordinary perspective uh, that I uh, respect uh, greatly and listen to very, very carefully. It would be interesting to me to see what the broader scope of the nursing profession does when they talk about policy issues outside of the privacy of our intense conversations that we have in my own home. Now, I think that would be something that would be interesting that I would look forward to. Fabulous. Well, we look forward to it as well. And we look forward to seeing you both whenever we can be uh, together uh, in person. And I know our full uh, fellowship thanks you very much for your time today. And thanks you very much for accepting our honorary uh, fellowship. Thank you again. Thank, thank you. you. It's been our pleasure. And thank you for this great honor. I certainly appreciate it. It's great to have another fellow in the Academy. <laughs> <laughs>
At this point in my career, it is my commitment to serve the public and the profession of nursing by collaborating on a national and global level to advance health policy, practice, and science. As a fellow in the Academy, I will be able to offer my skills and participate on expert panels, working alongside and learning from the dynamic leaders who are making outstanding contributions to nursing and healthcare. Jean Shinners. My work focuses on lifelong learning and professional development, establishing and sustaining evidence and competency-based transition programs provides nurses with the foundations needed to lead change as we care for patients and transform healthcare. Georgia. Dawn Acock. I am standing in front of this brick wall as a symbol of strength and unity because one of the greatest lessons that I have learned is that no one can succeed without effort and commitment. And none of us would likely be members of the Academy if we had stopped at failure, challenges, or shortcomings. Brenda Baker. One of the nursing profession's greatest strengths is the ability to represent the lived experiences of people. Daily nurses, no matter their specialty or position, care for patients, navigate systems, and lead change because nurses are the experts when it comes to the health of people. Susan Brasher. Through my patient-centered outcomes research, I will continue to make a substantial impact on the lives of children and families, particularly those diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Such an impact can be seen in the reduction of disparities that prohibit children from receiving a timely diagnosis and access to quality health care. Carolyn Clevenger. My work is focused on older adults and specifically those living with Alzheimer's disease or a related disorder and their family caregivers. Alzheimer's disease is an epidemic. It affects almost 6 million Americans. I've created and continue to build models of care that are comprehensive and responsive to the needs of this population because the model is co-produced with people living with disease and their caregivers. Erin Ferranti. As leaders in our field and in our specialties, we are a trusted source for policy, social justice, and patient-focused care. And we are called upon for our vital contributions in these areas. I am honored to join this extraordinary group of nurse leaders and look forward to influencing public health policy, particularly to improve maternal health outcomes. Linda Grabby. And I think we can draw on the collective strength of nurses uh, to change things because the majority of the public and us has experienced ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. And it, this impacts health throughout the lifetime, but we can counteract the harms done to children and uh, interrupt intergenerational trauma. Ursula Kelly. The greatest lessons I learned and relearned during my career and in my life are best expressed by John Lewis, whose reported refrain at work was, be kind, be mindful, be particular, be the best version of yourself. Make it plain, make it simple, make it sing. Kim Keebler. As a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing, my voice can be louder and heard in Washington, D.C. as a national thought leader who can lend meaningful and relevant innovation to patients with multiple chronic conditions and their families. The Academy provides a conduit to my quest to gain a federal appointment with the support and foundation it offers. Terry Marin. The greatest lesson I have learned throughout my career is the power of trust. Establishing trust is a mutual process and involves truthfulness and transparency. As leaders of the most trusted profession, we can set the example for being trustworthy with our patients, our public, and our peers. Victoria Pock. Being a fellow of the Academy means having an opportunity to work together with a diverse group of colleagues to address major public health issues. It's an honor to be recognized by the Academy. I'm so grateful to the Academy 
my sponsors, and mentors. The findings in my research will improve sleep and public health. Samuel Charter. On the greatest lesson I've learned during my career, I feel that it is essential to build and maintain relationships. These relationships inform translational leadership, enhance collaboration, and support the delivery of competent and compassionate care. Tanya Sudia. Among my most meaningful nursing career lessons is to be humble enough to approach every patient and individual encounter as the lesson it is intended to be. For impactful healthcare change arises from actively observing and compassionately listening to the otherwise silent and unmet needs of others. Doreen Wagner. The legislative activism of individual nurses at the local, state, and federal levels demonstrates how the collective strength of nursing can impact health policy. My recent activism with the Georgia Council of Perioperative Registered Nurses and Georgia Nurses Association is on legislation to regulate evacuation of toxic surgical smoke in Georgia operating rooms. We are focused on reintroducing Senate Bill 347 in 2021. Weewa Zhang. I started working as a nurse, then a nurse educator. Regardless of the settings, I have been shaping the public's health from all facets. As an educator in the U.S. with past experience as a Fulbright scholar, I'm looking forward to making differences in general public health nationally and internationally. Guam. Becoming a fellow means a great deal. As the first nurse on Guam to receive this honor, I feel it validates our profession. It shows that we do matter, that a nurse from a small island can make an impact and contribute to our profession. This honor comes at a time when many are suffering from personal losses due to the pandemic. I take comfort in this recognition that dedication to our community is indeed worthwhile. Hong Kong. Park Chun Janita Chow. My program of research focuses on optimizing health for stroke survivors. I hope my work will continue to enhance self-management for survivors in the transition from hospital to community and drive practice innovations in stroke rehabilitation. Winnie So. The Academy is highly influential in promoting strategies for quality care. With 60% global cancer cases reported in Asia and low- and middle-income countries, my expertise on early detections of cancer address an areas for improvement and aligns with the efforts of the Academy. Doris Yu. As a researcher and educator in gerontological nursing, I see nursing as one of the key stakeholders in addressing the challenges of global population aging. I hope my professional engagements can continue to inform the developments of high-impact community access and also effective interface between formal and informal care service to promote active aging in the evolving global healthcare context. Hi, on behalf of myself and foreigner, I want to offer the most sincere thank you to the American Academy of Nursing's 2020 Fellows. They are incredible healthcare leaders. We are humbled by the constant top-notch care you offer to those who need it most. And with that, I'm sending the most heartfelt congratulations to the class of new fellows and to all honorary fellows. Your valiant efforts are not going unnoticed. Thank you guys. Illinois. Sarah. Ailey. I look forward to working with the Academy to expand the expertise of nurses to address systemic initiatives needed to improve the health and health care of persons with disabilities through a new expert panel on disability and health in nursing. Robin Begley. As healthcare leaders, our goal is to achieve optimal health for every person. I am working to reduce the disparities in healthcare and create health equity by leading organizational efforts to foster diversity and inclusivity within nursing leadership and the nursing profession. 
Kamo Adorawi. Throughout my journey, I learned to always be sincere, authentic, and compassionate. I also learned that devoting yourself to saving and serving humanity and advocating for social and environmental justice will add more meaning to and extend the value of your life for generations to come. Pamela Martin Nemeth. I hope that my work will improve the lives of people with diabetes through the development of evidence-based interventions to improve sleep and reduce the stressors associated with self-management. As the incidence of diabetes increases worldwide, it's necessary to develop interventions that prevent complications and improve quality of life. Rachel Start. My focus is on advancing our discipline in settings such as ambulatory, where the need for nursing is largely just hypothesized but not well researched, and in particular, its ability to fully meet the social contract, improving individual and population health. Mobilizing and researching these strengths in ambulatory, a setting that can connect the continuum for patients over the course of, in many instances, 40 to 50 years of a patient's life. Lauren Underwood. There are literally millions of nurses in this country, and if we spoke up on behalf of our patients, their families, our communities, and our country, we could literally transform our healthcare system. So no longer can we afford to stay silent. We can't say we're not political or somehow opt out of our system. We have to step up. Our country needs our leadership. Indiana. Kathleen Abrahamson. My research as well as my practice has been focused on long-term care services and supports. And I think this is a pivotal time for nursing in regards to the delivery of long-term care. Nursing staff is being acknowledged as essential workers, yet at the same time, they're often not given the equipment or the staff that they need to serve nursing home residents and to keep themselves safe. Judith Berger. In recent years, I've encouraged and mentored nurses to seek out opportunities to participate on boards in alignment with the 2010 Future of Nursing report, as well as the Nursing on Boards campaign. To date, we have Parkview nurses on 127 boards. And I am personally aware of the results of having the unique voice and perspective of a nurse that has led to better health in the communities that they serve. Pamela Hunt. The career of nursing allows us the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of others every day. Being a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing represents the responsibility to ensure that nursing's contributions are always visible, sustainable, and impactful. Teresa Kessler. My community-based research supports the need to focus on the social determinants of health, health promotion activities, and gaining access to health care for those individuals who face social and economic disadvantages. Amelia Knopf. I hope that the public health impact of my work is to reduce health disparities among vulnerable populations by finding ways to ethically include them in biomedical trials. Yvonne Yuefeng Lu. I hope my work will widely promote, sustain engagement in daily meaningful activities for persons struggling cognitive decline and will foster a positive health care model for older people at home in retirement community or assisted living. Madrine Schober. Highlighting my international experience and expertise in policy, education, and advocacy for the advancement of nursing practice, it is my intent to continue to bring heightened awareness of the changes and challenges nurses face worldwide. Iowa. Cindy Dawson. The greatest lesson learned during my career is that nursing can really take you anywhere. You should accept experiences that they are offered, and if they're not offered, ask what experiences are available. Do not forget to take time for yourself along the way. Barbara St. Marie. 
Becoming a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing means that my work has had impact on nursing. I welcome opportunities to address the needs of people with pain and substance use disorder through the Academy and to decrease the gap between the disorder and the treatment. Ireland. Mary McCarran. During my career, I've learned that it is the passion for what we do that takes us through these difficult times. I would encourage nurses to find out what they deeply care about and to commit themselves to that area and to make that their focus, their area of interest. And I would also say that perseverance matters. Elizabeth Weathers. Organisations like the Academy that draw together nurse leaders and provide a platform to work together are powerful in terms of impacting policy. There is strength in a collective voice of nurse leaders proposing changes to policy, especially when nursing is the most trusted healthcare profession in the world. Italy. Ecole Vellone. I study self-care in people affected by chronic conditions and the role of informal caregivers in patient self-care. My goal is to influence healthcare system worldwide to invest more in making people active in managing their health. This would benefit patients and healthcare systems. Kansas. Becky Christian. My research is focused on children and adolescents with chronic conditions and how families manage their chronic condition to improve their quality of life. Kentucky. Camille Burnett. I think it's important that we need to be present and until we're truly present unilaterally at the varieties of seats of power that exist, then we can leverage our collective strength. And it's really important that in the meantime that we use our voices to amplify some of the most pressing issues of our time, such as racism and injustice, and then we need to act to rectify them. Sharon Locke. I hope my work in primary care will contribute to nurse practitioners being recognized as expert primary care providers with full practice authority in all 50 states, and that registered nurses will be considered essential members of the primary care team. Yolanda Powell Young. Being a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing provides an opportunity to collaborate with accomplished nursing leaders throughout the world to effectively advance a healthcare agenda that promotes optimum wellness for all people. Joan Slager. Hello, I'm Joan Slager, Dean of Nursing at Frontier Nursing University in Kentucky in the United States. APRNs are central to addressing our country's healthcare needs and improving access to care. The linchpin that promotes autonomous practice is the ability to bill for services. My work includes educating APRNs about the principles of billing and coding and actively advocating for policy change that allow independent billing and reimbursement from payers. Being inducted as a fellow of the Academy of Nursing represents an additional opportunity to advocate and influence positive change that will increase the impact of nursing within our healthcare system. I'm deeply grateful for this honor. Lavoria Williams. I hope that my work with faith-based communities will shape public health by ensuring that public health interventions are driven by data that's derived from diverse samples. When this occurs, the interventions will have their intended impact in improving population health. Our next honorary fellow is Dr. Karen Donnellan. Dr. Donnellan is a leading health policy and health services survey researcher. 
For many years, Dr. Donilon has served as a senior scientist and associate professor of medicine at the Mongan Institute's Health Policy Research Center at the Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. Recently, Dr. Donilon began her new role at Brandeis University as the inaugural Stuart H. Altman Professor of United States Health Policy at the Heller School for Social Policy and Management. Throughout her career, she has led many interprofessional, interdisciplinary research teams, which has helped to positively shape the public perception of nursing and build workforce capacity to help mitigate nurse shortages. Her work with the Johnson & Johnson Campaign for Nursing's Future has dramatically improved nursing and nursing practice environments. It was my pleasure to sit down and talk with Dr. Donilon and learn more about her perspectives about the intersection of health services research and nursing science to ensure the right questions are formulated, the right data are collected, and the best information is analyzed, particularly in light of a global pandemic that has impacted the healthcare workforce with its challenges and opportunities for future interprofessional collaboration. Hello, everyone. I'm delighted to join our distinguished guests tonight, Dr. Karen Donilon, for a virtual fireside chat. I believe Dr. Donilon has actually provided the fireside for us in, in her background. Welcome, Karen. I look forward to hearing more from you uh, this evening. And uh, as we honor you as a new honorary fellow in the American Academy of Nursing, what advice would you impart to the Academy's fellows when you have needed to lead with purpose and advance resiliency in a turbulent environment or when uncertainty challenges you the most? Thank you, Ken. First, let me just say that I am so honored to be with all of you and to have this opportunity to speak with you. Um, this career in nursing research has meant a great deal to me um, and to my family and I, we are all very excited and very honored. These are of course very difficult times and I think theme of crisis is so important. Um, I think there are a few things that I would highlight for people and I think nurses know a lot of these things instinctively so I'm not necessarily telling you things you don't know already. But what my training and the science that I do tells me is that we always have to remember in times of crisis that that word and that experience is different for everybody. And some people live in a state of perpetual crisis. Some people's families and family experiences have made them familiar to crises, especially health crises. But in the course of a year, one in four families experiences the death of a loved one or the loss of a home or some kind of medical diagnosis that might threaten their well being. And in this time of COVID, many more people are having those experiences. So we have to try our best to see things through the lenses that people bring. What is their experience? What kind of strength have they built up from their faith or from their values or from their family? Who is more vulnerable than others? And, and how can we lead in these moments with a full understanding of the kinds of communication that people need to address whatever their experience of this crisis is in healthcare in particular. What do you see as the most pressing health policy issues that we're facing today? And what do you think is needed for us to usher in a meaningful change? I think, Ken, throughout my career, the theme of my work has been in how do we address inequity in healthcare in many different ways. And so it probably isn't surprising that in this moment, I would choose even mid pandemic 
to highlight inequity because I believe that inequity and the lack of trust that gets engendered in healthcare or any institution when there is inequity is a, a challenge to all of us. And so when I think about the, the state of our country, of our healthcare system, we know that this pandemic has affected some people more than others in very profound ways. I feel like what we are learning through this time of crisis is that we need to hear those voices of people experiencing racial injustice in our society and in our system of healthcare. Thank you, Karen. I think that the next and final question you may have already answered, but I'll put it out there anyway. Um, as we evaluate our response to the pandemic, what do you see as priorities to improving nursing practice environments as well as patient outcomes? You know, I think that um, it really is that this is a team sport. And I think all of you know that. And the most important person on that team is that patient. And we are not working in opposition to one another as health professionals to care for that patient. For their sake, we need to work in harmony together and to ask tough questions of each other for sure and have our disagreements for sure, but realize at the end of the day that all of us have a role to play, even data geeks like me who are there trying to measure what's going on, both from the workforce perspective and the patient perspective. And when I speak of inequity, it is about patient care for sure, but it's also about the inequities that happen, I think, within teams and within institutions when we don't communicate well and we don't listen respectfully and speak respectfully to one another. So my hope is really that we'll take the best of what we can from this horrible time of crisis to build our teams better and build our communication better and build our communities of respect better going forward. Karen, thank you. And I, I would like to say that your passion, I believe, is so consistent with uh, the values of the American Academy of Nursing, especially social justice and diversity and inclusivity. So cheers. And uh, thanks to uh, all of you uh, at home for joining us. Thank you so much. I've so appreciated this opportunity. And I'm so grateful for this award. Um, I wish we could all be together in person, but I hope we have that opportunity before very long. Liberia. Viola Karanja. One of the greatest lessons that I've learned during my career is about mentorship. The importance of mentoring the young nurses, our next generations, to be leaders in leadership, leadership uh, positions so that they can make policies, so that they can be able to sit at the table, so that in the end we don't have people making policies for us, but the nurses making policies for themselves. Louisiana. Melinda Oberleitner. It is my hope that my work will shape the public's health in the future by ensuring oncology nursing capacity in terms of numbers and competence to enhance the care experiences of cancer survivors on the continuum from diagnosis through to the end of life. Maryland. Diana Lynn Baptiste. My name is Diana Lynn Baptiste. I'm a registered nurse and assistant professor at the Johns Hopkins School of Nursing in Baltimore, Maryland. Nurses are called to exhibit and embody human dignity for all people. Nurses can impact health policy by leveraging their collective voices in political advocacy to promote ethical research and influence policies that advance health equity. 
Nurses are uniquely qualified and empowered to lead necessary changes in health policy that can ensure dignified and equitable health care for all. Andrew Benson. One of the greatest lessons that I've learned in nursing is from recent experience in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. The strength and resilience of nursing and my team of CRNAs was demonstrated as I mobilized and joined them on the front lines in the COVID positive units, mentoring and supporting IMC nurses working in a unit that quickly transitioned to an ICU. The critical care skills and versatility of a CRNA put the spotlight on our profession and was recognized widely from hospital administrators. The strength of nursing is extraordinary. Gina Brown. The greatest lesson that I've learned in my career is to treat every patient like they're my family member, like it's my mom, my dad, my sisters, my brothers, my aunties, my uncles, my cousins. For it is in treating our patients like we want our family to be treated, that we give the very best care. Kristen Brown. Becoming a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing is a significant honor. This means I am joining a group of nurses that share my ideals for advancing nursing to the highest level. I'm joining a group of leaders, scientists, and innovators that have shaped healthcare. This is only the beginning. I know that becoming a fellow means that I am challenged with the duty to continue to push myself to work collaboratively to impact the ever-changing landscape of healthcare. Loressa Cole. For too long, despite our numbers, larger by far than any other provider group, nurses continue to be second thought for opinion seeking from policymakers, both locally and nationally. The Academy of Nursing and its esteemed Academy Fellows provide an optimum structure and an unlimited possibilities to move the nation's thought leaders in nursing to every table where healthcare decisions are made. Mary DiBartolo. In my continuing role as an educator, researcher, mentor, and advocate, I hope to be engaged in shaping public health through my contributions in promoting best practices in geriatric care and addressing key challenges facing the growing older adult population, specifically those with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Mary Fay. Hello, I'm Mary Fay from Maryland in the United States. Patient safety has been the focus of the work that I've done for the past 10 years. As a simulation educator, the focus of my work has been helping individuals and teams practice at peak performance, always keeping patient safety in mind. And the work that I do in teams is also directly connected to what I would call the greatest lesson I've learned in my nursing career, which is that none of us is as smart as all of us. That when we're connected, when we share a common goal and when we all move in the same direction, we become so much more powerful than any one individual can be. Kathleen Griffith. I hope that through my work, the public will further grasp that cancer is a chronic disease with many patients requiring ongoing management of their cancer as well as symptoms of the disease and its treatment. Then as a profession, we will have made a meaningful impact on how the public views the potential for successful management of a disease that affects so many. Denise Hinton. All of us have a duty to protect, promote, and advance the health and safety of our nation through our actions at home, in our communities, and through our work with the Academy. I hope my work will shape the public's health in the future by putting policies in place to eliminate disparities in health and in health care. Roby Victoria Hughes. My number one leadership lesson has been understanding the importance and the value of trust, of establishing that trusting relationship, of maintaining the integrity of that trust, and in extending my trust into others. It has made all the difference. Polly. Joseph. It is truly an honor to become a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing. Being a fellow means that my voice will transcend frontiers in healthcare and in science. As a fellow, I will continue my efforts in promoting diversity among nurse scientists. Junjin Lee. 
I hope my work could inform the public and healthcare professionals about the optimal type of exercise for older adults and also provide a way to prevent or attenuate cognitive decline in aging. The greatest lesson I've learned in my career is that we need to trust ourselves and take risks to try exciting things that are out of our comfort zone. Sometimes this will take us to a new avenue in our career. Paula Nira. The work that I do to advance public health is to really be committed to ensuring that no one would ever be denied access to health care or the ability to live their healthiest life because of bigotry, discrimination, and ignorance. Melanie Prince. As we move forward into this next decade, nurses must become nurse governors, representatives, senators, and nurses in the executive branch. We must formulate the policy. Nurses must set the vision for health policy, public health, and be prepared to address new norms that will affect all facets of our society. Madeline Reyes. Becoming a member of the expert panel on women's health and drawing on my experience in the field of maternal and child health, I hope to advance the work of this group by reducing the gaps of health disparities and inequalities for high-risk pregnant women and children living in underserved communities. Tanya Schneidereith. To me, being a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing is the culmination of a goal that was set more than 25 years ago. I'm excited to be able to work alongside leaders as we work to inform policy and shape the future of the nursing profession. Massachusetts. Andrew Dwyer. I also believe that the collective strength of nursing is a powerful and important force for helping to alleviate disparities related to genomic healthcare. Alyssa Ladd. I think it's the simple act of just showing up and speaking up as a nurse, showing up at community, state, and federal events or meetings, webinars, office hours, writing as many letters as we possibly can, whatever we can find that has bearing on how we deliver healthcare and how our citizens access healthcare. Patricia Reddy. I feel honored and privileged to be inducted into the American Academy of Nursing and to be among such esteemed leaders in the nursing profession. As a fellow, I have the opportunity to address health disparities through my work in interprofessional education and practice and to enhance the role of advanced practice nursing. Ellen Robinson. Nursing's disciplinary perspective shines light on patient response when the patient's voice is lost in a highly medicalized culture. Collective voices of ethics and policy experts to urge responsible stewardship of resources can impact end-of-life care and redirect utilization of health care dollars toward more beneficial care. Nancy White Street Today, I come to the library for my commentary, a place where stories are celebrated. I believe nurses are uniquely qualified to tell the stories of patients and families and their health care needs. Today, nurses need to stand up, to be seen, to be heard collectively to advance health populations. Rachel Walker. Scholars and mentors have taught me that most of the systems people call broken are functioning exactly as designed, and the people in power know it. If we want to create new futures to transform health, we need to transform who has the power, including in nursing. Lisa Wolf. The most important lesson I've learned is that the problem is bigger than you think it is. I learned this from Dottie Jones, who was my dissertation chair and mentor at BC. Um, I walked into grad school with this nice, tight little study on chest pain. 
uh, and I've walked out with a theory of decision making that has shaped my academic and clinical work ever since. Michigan. Adejoke Ayola. The interventions address health disparities and promote maternal and child health across lifespans among women and girls from various economic, educational, and ethnic backgrounds by focusing on increasing women's knowledge and understanding of reproductive physiology and contraception. Sue Ann Bell. My work supports healthy aging in the face of the advancing impacts of climate change and extreme weather events. And I hope to use data-informed interventions in order to contribute to supporting the development of healthy and resilient communities, especially for older adults. Randolph Rash. I have a sustained history of public service and shaping policy to affect disadvantaged populations and minorities. I hope that that work can be used to accomplish the same sorts of things in terms of the health of the public. Minnesota. Lisa Martin. I hope my work will promote the public's health by creating a growing recognition and respect of Native American values and worldview, and also by increasing the number of Native American nurses in the U.S. Sonia Myers. Being a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing means that I am being recognized by the profession that I have loved since I was a child. Being a fellow also means that I must continue to boldly advocate for excellence in nursing education, particularly APRN nursing education. Mississippi. Mary Stewart. I hope my work will help shape the future of public health, specifically for underrepresented black women at risk for cervical cancer. To meet the needs of all individuals, our clinical practice guidelines must be based on research, inclusive of our diverse population. I'm very fortunate to work with a gifted team who understands this principle and labors to achieve a cancer-free world. Missouri. Suzanne Mahon. As a child, my father always told me to follow my own star. I learned from him and accepted a position developing a hereditary cancer program that at the time was considered controversial and possibly career ending. 30 years later, we know that genomic information offers the best promise of truly preventing cancer, detecting it early, and selecting the best possible treatment. Po Yin Yen. Being a fellow of the Academy encourages me to continue devoting myself to advancing and translating nursing and informatics science. The greatest lesson I learned during my career is to always challenge myself with a new approach or a new question. Montana. Laura Larson. The greatest lesson I've learned in my nursing career is to follow the work. Instead of becoming an expert in my specialty area, instead I've been responsive to the needs of the community. It's been the most satisfying years of my career to be an advocate and a servant to the American Indian communities as they strive to achieve health equity. Nebraska. Amy Hoffman. A lesson that I have learned is to expect the unexpected and the unexpected has happened for me. I have been a nurse now for 35 years, starting as a diploma graduate that grew to be a professor at Nebraska and a National Cancer Institute researcher at the Fred and Pamela Buffett Cancer Center. I am grateful to all of those who have helped me along the way and for the opportunities I have been given to be able to make an impact on the rehabilitation of surgical lung cancer patients to optimize their quality of life. Nevada. Alona Angosta. 
Advancing the health of all populations nationally and globally is the core of nursing and public health. My research work that centers on the health of Asian Americans and my service and leadership contributions help promote diversity, equality, and inclusivity. Jin Young Kim. As a sleep researcher, my big hope for the public health is people getting better health through better sleep. Specifically, I hope to contribute to developing personalized symptom management strategies for obstructive sleep apnea patients and shift workers. New Jersey Jill Cox Acceptance as a fellow means to me a continued commitment to lead the way for change that will strengthen and shape the future of nursing, both in times of healthcare crisis and in our everyday nursing practice. I am honored to be recognized among so many leaders, legends, and pioneers who have transformed nursing and shaped healthcare policy. Laura Leahy. My goal as a fellow in the Academy is to challenge the misperceptions and biases of the public and our healthcare colleagues in treating those with psychiatric and substance use disorders so that they are provided the same comprehensive care and treatment as others with chronic relapsing conditions. Patricia Supley. I hope my work in maternal health will contribute to the science and translation of research into practice. To improve maternal outcomes, we must identify gaps in care between patients and providers, systems and community services, and design interventions that will empower women to advocate for themselves, especially during the childbearing period. Congratulations to the American Academy of Nursing's 2020 Fellows. What a well-deserved honor. This year has challenged so many of us, but the Academy and this incredible new class of accomplished leaders reminds us that a healthier future is on the horizon. Though this year's ceremony may look a bit different than years past, I wanted to send the most heartfelt thank you as you continue to fight day in and day out to make lasting and impactful change. Your contributions to the medical field are critical and appreciated, now really more than ever. So congratulations to the new class. Bravo, y'all. New York. Toby Bressler. I will bring my successful record of leadership, unique knowledge, and unwavering commitment to shaping the future of healthcare delivery with nursing at the helm. Melding my faith with nursing science and social justice, I will continue to advocate for health equity for at-risk communities. I will leverage my expertise in oncology and palliative care to promote policy and improve clinical outcomes. Billy Caceres. Being a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing signifies in my work to eliminate cardiovascular health disparities among LGBTQ people and racial ethnic minorities is recognized and valued by leaders in our profession. Barbara Ann Delmore. I'm thrilled to be admitted to the Academy and be able to work alongside such austere nursing colleagues who have paved the way for nursing, for patient care, and for the healthcare systems in general. As I've learned in my 38 years of nursing, it is in working together that we are stronger and can affect positive change. Stephen Ferrara. The collective strength of nursing needs to impact health policy. We need the power of every nurse in this country to help ensure that we have healthy communities, healthy environment, and equitable access to health care. Lori Goshen. Regarding nursing and policy, the question to me is, how can we bring the full strength of nursing to impact other policy areas that also have devastating health effects, such as correctional policy, criminal law, and family law? I want us to see beyond tailored health programming for prisons and jails to a future in which we don't need them. Vincent Guillamo Ramos. For the past 20 years, I've been focused on the important role of parents and how parents shape adolescent sexual and reproductive health decision-making. As you know, nurses are the largest segment of the public health workforce. 
Without nurses, it would be impossible to reach the goal of universal health coverage. Aaron Hartnett. As program director of the Oral Health Nursing Education and Practice Program, I hope that my work will continue to shape public health in the future by eliminating oral health disparities in this critical population health problem, by integrating oral health into overall health in nursing education and in best practices. Anne Margaret Dunn Navarra. This fellowship also means great responsibility. Therefore, I am committed to shaping public health through my program of biobehavioral research directed at facilitating medication self-management and healthcare access for youth living with HIV. By using innovative models of care supported with technology, my hope is to decrease health disparities among underserved pediatric populations. Annie Rohan. I am prepared to make substantive contributions to the expert panel on maternal and infant health. I will bring my national expertise and editorial leadership to develop and disseminate evidence that supports the panel's focus on promoting nursing's role in advancing health policy and delivery to improve maternal infant outcomes. Jing Jing Shang. By joining the AAM, I will bring my expertise in infection prevention and control in home health care setting, which is essential in the current pandemic. I'm dedicated to advancing the field of infection prevention control in the home health care setting and bringing innovative changes to clinical practice. Joanne Singleton. My work with Professor Spirit shapes the public's health through quality care for individuals with disabilities teamed with the service dog by educating nurses and other interprofessional health care providers to be knowledgeable about and culturally competent in providing care to this cultural community. Larry Slater. It is truly an honor to be inducted as a fellow into the American Academy of Nursing. We talk about standing on the shoulders of our nursing giants, but now to be included in their fellowship is truly a humbling experience and one that I will take forward as this is not just the culmination of my career, but the continuation of my journey as a visionary nursing education leader. Victoria Tiasi. I generate knowledge related to patient-generated health data and promote the evolving role of nurses in redesigning information processes that allow patients and families to request, share, and use their health data. My vision for nursing includes the use of technology in shared decision-making. Janet Van Cleve. The most important goal that I have set is my overarching career goal to improve the lives of older adults with cancer. Through this work, I hope to shape policy initiatives that result in a healthcare system that aligns with the needs and the desires of the population it serves, especially older adults with cancer. North Carolina. Mary Affronti. Collaboratively with my fan colleagues, I hope to improve the public health of the future through clinical research and teaching our advanced practice nurses the importance of ameliorating symptoms through self-management and adherence to guidelines in order to improve the quality of life and survival of individuals, especially those living with cancer. Cherry Beasley. At the University of North Carolina at Pembroke, a historical American Indian serving university, now among the most diverse universities in the country. Just as UNCP has changed with the demands of society and yet has maintained a strong foundation in our history, I know that the current and future nursing workforce can and must do the same by developing new models of care that allow for differences with the goal of a brighter future for all. Ashley Leek Bryant. My work is impactful because we address palliative care and physical activity needs of older adults with cancer at the time of diagnosis. And it is my hope that this work will be disseminated widely. Virginia Muckler. I hope that my transgender work will shape the public's health and lead to policy change that reforms America's health system. 
Advancing awareness of health inequalities and disparities is an attainable goal and the first step to change. Victoria Saltis Jarrett. The collective strength of nursing can and will impact health policy as long as we nurture ourselves, our colleagues, and our students. This so we can continue to provide high quality, cost-effective care to the most vulnerable individuals in our communities. Anne-Marie Walton. To me, fellowship symbolizes past, present, and future. It recognizes the contributions of my mother and grandmother, both nurses, as well as the patients and instructors who shaped me. It's a commitment to action, to advancing health policy, science, and practice with some of the most outstanding colleagues in the field. Finally, it's a symbol of hope for the future. Ohio. Angela Clark. I hope my work continues to lead to population health promotion advancements with interventions that address all levels of the community and healthcare system and result in informed, activated populations and fluid interprofessional teams who are capable of removing health inequities. I am committed to a culture of kindness and health. Jody Ford. I have two greatest lessons to share that I've learned so far during my career. The first is to follow your passion and be aware that your passion may change throughout your career as you experience life. The second is to persevere and move forward. There will be ups and downs, but if the key is, if you follow your passion, then perseverance is easy. Chao Pin Shou. As a translational science researcher and a nurse scholar, I hope continue to make outstanding and highly visible contributions to nursing by initiating innovative biobehavioral nurse-led research discoveries that can be directly translatable to practice that impacts national and international arenas. Joan Kavanaugh. I've spent the last 10 years working to quantify and mitigate the preparation to practice gap. We're clearly not where we want to be. You know, I often talk about the fact that we own the success of our new grads together, but it's so much more than that. We own, as true academic practice partners, the success of the care we're able to deliver to our patients. Pamela Lusk. I'm a psych mental health nurse practitioner with children and adolescents, and the lesson I've learned is the importance of timely access to mental health care whenever young people need it. With the pandemic, we've been bolted into telehealth, and it's been terrific. Reimbursement has improved, regulations have been lifted. Young people with their phones and their iPads have access to care wherever they are. Susan Mazanek. There's a critical need to better prepare family caregivers for the pivotal role they play in supporting their loved ones during rigorous cancer treatment. I hope that my research will provide evidence that psychoeducational and simulation interventions better prepare them for this role during this difficult time. Elizabeth Sharp. My work initially focused on vascular access for tiny babies at the beginning of their lives and became a personal passion when my grandmother developed a vascular access complication. My collaborative work in neonatal care, vascular access, and infusion therapy empowers nurses to promote successful outcomes for patients across their lifespan. Valerie Tolley. The greatest lesson that I have learned is nursing's key role as facilitator. For example, empowering parents caring for a child dependent on medical technology. It means coming alongside of them, teaching self-help and help-seeking skills to promote their physical and mental health. Joyce Zermeli. In regards to the strength and influence nursing can have on policy, I think that innovation and policy are formed by evidence and advanced by collaborations with all of healthcare partners and all of our consumers that we really need to find the common ground and work together to influence change by bridging these disparities between strategic health policy direction and actual clinical practice. Oklahoma. 
Melissa Kraft. The greatest lesson I learned in my career is that I will never know enough. And that is actually the key to lifelong learning and lifelong striving for excellence. The other greatest lesson is that authentic caring and respect is the foundation for success in all endeavors. Pennsylvania. Laura Fenimore. You know, the American public trust nurses. Every day we raise four million voices to advocate for the people in our care. Collectively, we can tell their stories to change policies that impact healthcare. Mary Jane Hansen. Greetings. My research focuses on cigarette smoking behavior and ethnically diverse youth. Through this work, I hope to decrease both the incidence and prevalence of smoking in adolescents and teens, and in turn, improve the health of future generations. Michael Cost. I am drawn to Florence Nightingale's quote, to never lose an opportunity of urging a practical beginning, however small, for it is wonderful how often in such matters the mustard seed germinates and roots itself. My future work will continue to utilize technology and educational innovation as a rich resource to identify latent threats and system issues that can compromise patient safety. Betty Mariani. As nurse educators, practitioners, researchers, administrators, and advocates, we touch the lives of many in a multitude of settings and are well known as one of the most trusted professions. Together as leaders and change agents, we have the ability to use our unique strength and knowledge derived from scientific evidence, our collective vision, and our commitment to advocacy to influence policy development and empower the most vulnerable and change the future of healthcare. Margaret McCabe. Becoming a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing allows me the opportunity to continue my professional development as a leader and a scholar, and to share my expertise in clinically-based pediatric nursing inquiry and clinical research nursing practice. I plan to contribute to and eventually lead initiatives to impact policy in my areas of expertise. Sheridan Miyamoto. Individuals who experience sexual violence deserve equitable access to compassionate, trauma-informed, person-centered care no matter where they live. It's my hope that my work will support public health by scaling telehealth hubs of expertise that will support sexual assault nurse examiners in rural and underserved areas to provide this specialty nursing care that we know promotes healing. Melissa O'Connor. I hope that my work will shape and improve the care of older adults living in the community by generating evidence-based knowledge specifically in home health so that we can learn how to best care for this growing population of chronically and often acutely ill older adults living at home. Kimberly Olszewski. In my practice discipline as an occupational health nurse, I have the ability to touch the lives of workers and worker families. My work on supporting and driving the concept of total worker health will ultimately raise awareness on need for policies, programs, and practices that integrate protection from work-related safety and health hazards with promotion of injury and illness prevention efforts to advance worker and worker family well-being. Kalud Salman. I am honored to be selected as a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing for year 2020. Uh, this will give me a great opportunity to engage with the prominent nursing leaders who have made a significant impact on the transformation of the healthcare system, as well as advancing the nursing profession at the national and international level. Republic of Korea. Un Hee Jo. I hope my work can change policies to solve adverse patient outcomes and nursing shortages in hospitals and nursing homes. My research focuses on safe nurse taking and work environment to improve patient outcomes and nurse retention. 
Jin Shil Kim. In the next decade, I believe that I will continually contribute to reduction in unnecessary suffering and improvements in health outcomes among cardiovascular patients through individual-based and population-wide interventions. Eunhee Kang. My work focused on person-centered care, restraint-free care, and non-pharmacological interventions for older adults living with dementia. I hope that my work will improve the quality of life of older adults living with dementia and their carers. Haiyan Guang Li. Pride and confidence in nature and the potential of nursing. I believe that nursing is a well explained discipline that does better than anything else in ensuring health as a basic human right. I am here today because I had mentors to guide me to keep this value in mind and I aspire to be such a mentor as well. Rhode Island. Denise Copa. The greatest lesson I've ever learned in nursing is to never settle for the status quo in healthcare. Push for nursing's greater good through education, research, practice, and policy development. Singapore. Wen Ru Wang. Being a scientist in nursing, I will continue to work hard towards establishing and expanding my collaborations with multidisciplinary teams of researchers to develop evidence-based, patient-centered, innovative, and cost-effective interventions to address the complex public health care needs in the future. South Africa. Petra Brzezowicz. Trauma and unexpected illness can be a devastating experience for a patient and their family, as well as the healthcare professionals involved. And I have really strived through my work to try and make this a better experience for all involved. And I have done this through my clinical practice, through education and through research. Thank you. South Carolina. Khalil de Monbrion. I think one of the best ways the collective strength of the nursing profession can impact health policy is by making policy the fourth P and ensuring that policy is a mandate in our education and socialization equivalent to pathophysiology, pharmacology, and physical assessment. Collectively, we can change the rules so that we aren't seeking permission to care. Chidi Jaja. I'm a health science researcher with interest in sickle cell disease pain and pharmacogenetics. I am using pharmacogenetics data to develop algorithms that healthcare providers can use to prescribe and titrate medication for both acute and chronic sickle cell disease pain. Essentially, I'm personalizing pain pharmacotherapy in sickle cell disease patients. Switzerland. Maya Zumstein. I believe in nursing's collective strength and power, as this represents one of our key characteristics. Nurses constitute a large workforce in every country and around the world. If we succeed in standing together and raise our united voices, we can influence policy and improve individual health. Each year, the Academy's board receives nominations for honorary fellowship. These individuals, who have a background outside of nursing, have exemplified interprofessionalism throughout their careers. Their induction as honorary fellows signify their outstanding contributions to healthcare and their collaboration with the nursing profession to improve care. Our first honorary fellow to celebrate this evening is Lord Nigel Crisp. Lord Crisp is a member of the United Kingdom's House of Lords 
as well as an, a distinguished expert in global health. He is the founder and a co-chair of the all-party parliamentary group on global health. As a chief executive of the United Kingdom's National Health Service, Lord Crisp led many reforms that resulted in significant cost savings and care improvements within the National Health Service. His international collaboration with the World Health Organization, International Confederation of Midwives, International Council of Nurses, and the United Nations Population Fund led to the designation of 2020 as the International Year of the Nurse and the Midwife. He has worked extensively to improve health outcomes throughout the world and recently founded the Nursing Now Global Campaign to raise the profile and status of the nursing profession. As of June 2020, Nursing Now had enrolled over 700 groups in 122 countries around the world with almost 30,000 early career nurses and midwives enrolled in the Nightingale Challenge, designed to enhance leadership capacity through professional development opportunities. I had the honor to sit down with Lord Crisp and discuss his insights on global health, policy impact, and the fortuitous year it has been in light of 2020 being designated the International Year of the Nurse and Midwife. Good evening. I'm back with you and it's an honor and a privilege to be with Lord Nigel Crisp for our fireside chat format. Lord Crisp um, or Nigel, let's get right into uh, our questions here. Um, I wanna start by uh, reiterating the theme of the Academy's 2020 policy conference. And it is in crisis and calm, leading with purpose. What advice would you impart to the Academy's fellows uh, when you have needed to lead with purpose in advance, resiliency in a turbulent environment, or when uncertainty challenges the process? Well, thank you, Ken. And may I start by just saying how honored I am to receive this great honor from the Academy. It's a real privilege and an honor for me. Um, let me also just say how enormously difficult this time has been for everyone and how much nurses have been throughout the world absolutely at the front line. I know that in my country there's a new and increased respect for nurses as a result of what people have been doing during COVID, ranging in everywhere from the most intense areas of hospitals right the way through to the community testing and so on. And I think that in some ways, whilst this is an awful time, and I know people are having a very tough time, and I pay my tribute to nurses throughout the world for what they're doing, um, I also recognise that now is a moment when we can talk more about nursing, I think, and where we can really recognise the importance of nursing. Your very important point about how do you manage to lead through this sort of situation, I think I'd suggest three things. The first one is when the going gets tough, you can, you can get bogged down. You can start to think that everything's landing on you and you're, you're in sort of siege mentality. And one important thing to do is to remember the purpose, the word you used. Remember why you're there. Don't get too tied up in the individual things. Remember the big picture. The second thing is to remember you're not alone. I used to run the biggest health system in the world, the England's National Health Service, with 1.4 million employees within it. Um, and had many, many hospitals. And the ones that got, everyone got into trouble at some time or other, but the people who got out of trouble, who managed well with resilient, were the people who went and found a friend. To, they, they reached out. They asked other people for help. They, they didn't go into a sort of siege mentality. They, they went and said, how can, how, could, you know, I've got a problem here. How can you help me with it? So they reached out to people so that it became a common effort. And my third simple point is as a leader, one of the things you do for your people is you show them the way you're going. So really important to keep giving people progress reports. If I were running a hospital at the moment, I'd be briefing staff every day about what's going on, how we're managing with things, what's going on in the bigger picture. And I've seen that in my country where some politicians are good at doing this. They brief well, they keep people involved, um, but there are others who don't. So it's those three things. Remember the purpose, 
reach out and find people to work with you, find your allies and friends. And thirdly, communicate progress, keep people with you. I want to move into um, uh, your expertise as a, uh, uh, in global health. What do you see as the most pressing health policy issue? And what do you think is needed to usher in a meaningful change? Yeah, again, a terrific question. Um, I think at the moment, if I were to pick one thing, I'd say it was about solidarity. I'd say it was about global solidarity and not going in different directions. Really important that even if the World Health Organization needs improvement, that we are working with our partners around the world to link together, to learn from each other. And equally, that when there is a vaccine and treatments for COVID, that actually we're sharing them. So I think COVID has shown us how important it is for that sort of sense of global solidarity um, to be there. Let me also just sneak in one other point, which is if I'd been asked this question a year ago or two years ago or three years ago, or possibly in two years time, I'd have said the most important issue is people. It's always people. I spent a lot of time in Africa in recent years. And one of the things that is so depressing is that there are still a billion people around the world who don't have access to healthcare, never see a health worker. Nurses, of course, are the first professionals most people meet. Um, and if I were talking with um, health ministers, as I often do in Africa or elsewhere, I'd be saying, invest in people, invest in, invest in nurses in particular, I'd be saying, but actually invest in people because it's people with any level of health education who are able to support people within the community. Uh, and that's really important. Yes, of course, we need technology. Yes, of course, we need all the other things that we need, good supplies and medicines and so on. But at the heart of it, it's people. Or as a good friend of mine said, let's remember that healthcare is always a human contact sport and we need human contact. To close, I want to congratulate you on being an honorary fellow of the American Academy of, of Nursing. This is quite an honor, and we're all honored that you're uh, among us uh, as ranks, in the ranks of, as fellows uh, of the Academy. I want to thank you for your time. Uh, we may not have had a fireside for our fireside chats, but between uh, the United Kingdom and uh, Virginia in the U.S., uh, we were able to, uh, I think, generate some warmth and some common uh, uh, goals and, and um, interests around nursing, nurses, and uh, improved care for all. I would say that you have a fire in the belly that we all appreciate. You're, you're singing our song, and I thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, be well and uh, be safe. Good night. Thank you very much indeed. Great talking to you. Taiwan. Li Chi John. Nurses can improve people's health. Establishing a nursing policy can promote global health. Universal health coverage needs all of the nurses in the world to work together. Fan Hao Chu. The greatest lesson I learned during my career is to never give up. As an academic nurse scientist and inventor, we have to go through a serious journey of learning, overcoming challenges, and finally reach self-transcendence. Junyu Fan. I continue to devote my time and efforts to develop, translate, and disseminate my research findings to improve the quality of nursing education, such as weighting the value of education against the risk and the strength to the student personally and professionally while facing the pandemic. You heard lie. I will keep expanding my impacts on cancer care and the tobacco control through health care system. I will also advocate for people with health disparities through media 
I believe nursing can influence policy through strong academic evidences, clinical performance, and the governmental committee involvement. Hey, Fan, Mu. I'm committed to making contributions to and influence the development and implementation of evidence-based health policies that support both patients and family engagement during health care and when care decisions are made. By collaborating in an interdisciplinary manner with FAAN and the international evidence-based practice experts and organizations. Shufeng Sai. Taiwan has become a country where nurses can be a voice to lead. It didn't reach this far from the beginning, as I've witnessed its progress along my career span of more than three decades. It's proved that the collective strength of nursing can make a difference to this world. Xu Feng Wu. My significant contribution support the mission of AAN by advancing health science through the nursing leadership. I'm a professor of nursing and a vice president, controlling the nursing teaching quality and continuing to improve the international nursing integration. Thank you. Tennessee. Belinda Mandrell. My work has described the etiology of sleep disturbances among childhood cancer survivors with the potential to change surveillance guidelines, including sleep evaluation across all cancer diagnosis, thus decreasing morbidity and mortality associated with hypersomnia and sleep apnea. Judy Rice. That the work I do will help shape the public's health by decreasing the stigma associated with having a mental illness and replacing that stigma with a greater understanding of mental illness. Ansley Stanfill. The greatest lesson that I've learned in my career is to always turn my energy to becoming a better advocate for my patients, whether it's at the bedside, in my research recruitment, or here in my genomics lab. I always want to address the concerns that are most important to my patient and their families. Texas. Hioko Brian on. I hope my work will improve pain and symptom management in older adults using computer technologies. I've worked as a computer engineer for more than 10 years and this experience will help me to develop innovative computer technologies in all the adults. Amy Anderson. The Academy has a rich tradition of advancing policy solutions that improve access to care, healthcare protections, optimization, and redesign to better meet community and healthcare worker needs. There is still much to be done. I look forward to working with the membership to guide sustainable policies that impact the future of healthcare. Kelly Brossel. I hope that my continued contributions to research and clinical practice guidelines will help to shape the future of the public's health, both in the United States and abroad, through contributions to cancer care, prevention, treatment, and survivorship. Lisa Campbell. To shape the future of the public's health, I'll continue to advocate for policies to strengthen the public health infrastructure, public health nursing workforce, and anti-racist policies that address social determinants of health across communities in the United States. Joyce Danes. After 20 years in nursing, I left my career to start a new one in law. And with that came my greatest lesson, that what I wanted to be, who I wanted to be, I'd been all along. I returned to nursing with renewed perspective, knowing that it was first and forever a nurse. James Dickens. As a senior nurse officer in the U.S. Public Health Service, my role in shaping the public's health is consistent with our mission which is to protect, promote, and advance the health and safety of the nation. The public health system is undergoing a remarkable transition, and nurses are uniquely positioned to lead in those efforts. Stacy Drake. I learned that it takes passion and self-reflection to be a nurse. I continually learn to use my skills and knowledge within a variety of settings. 
specifically in forensic nursing as a medical legal death investigator, where I have seldom found this interest reciprocated, yet I persevered. Ashley Hinnigan. My research is focused on reducing the late and long-term effects of cancer treatment. Considering that one in every three women and one in every two men will be impacted by cancer in their lifetime, it is my hope that by improving the health outcomes and quality of life for cancer survivors, we can improve our public's health. Eddie Bernice Johnson. Nurses are a valuable part of our healthcare system. The diversity of healthcare services provided by nurses impact policy and affect legislation. The contribution of nurses is vital, not only in our nation, but to the world. Susan Lee. It is my hope that my work will help shape the public's health in the future by finding a way to prevent and end homelessness, particularly in veterans. Joyce Newman. Becoming a fellow in the American Academy is a lifelong dream and a great honor. Being able to serve the Academy during these most challenging times will be an exciting and rewarding experience because I know I will be standing with some of the most amazing nursing professionals and leaders. Jessica Peck. I hope my work will shape the public's health in the future by inspiring others to use their voices as policy advocates, their eyes and hands as competent caregivers, their minds as teachers and scholars, and their hearts to clothe these efforts in compassion, strength, innovation, and resilience. Nursing will always rise up to meet the challenges of tomorrow. Kavita Radhakrishnan. Supporting healthy behaviors has become all the more imperative during the severe public health crisis of COVID-19 pandemic. My work is on supporting behaviors related to self-management through affordable and scalable mobile health interventions that enable older adults to age in place. Azize Sowan. The greatest lesson I learned during my career was that what got me here today may not be sufficient to get me somewhere else in the future. I never stopped learning to achieve my evolving personal vision and the nursing profession mission. I look forward to actively engage with the Academy Diverse Thinkers, learn more and make a difference. Dennis Spence. Being a fellow, means that I'll be able to use my many years of experience as a nursing leader in the United States Navy to advance the quality of health and nursing care in the military. I'm committed to helping to develop knowledge and policy that ensures our service members and beneficiaries continue to receive world-class health care. Nelson Toison. As founder of the San Antonio Nursing Consortium, I'll continue to promote public safety through our annual patient safety conference, Stop the Bleed program, and active shooter classes. My work with the Philippine Nurses Association of America will continue to advance our efforts on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Michelle Wright. My work aims to improve public health by determining how our exposures and experiences get under our skin using omics-based approaches. Results from these studies can be used to develop mechanistically driven nursing interventions to improve health and reduce disparities. I'm so honored to be in the virtual presence of such outstanding honorees. This year, we have all been reminded about the importance of our healthcare leaders. I know I speak for so many when I say we are endlessly grateful for the dedication and passion you exhibit every single day. Thank you. And with that, please let me extend the biggest congratulations to the class of new fellows and to all our honorary fellows. Your advocacy, diligence, and constant care is valuable beyond words. Endless thanks to all of you, our healers and our helpers. United Kingdom. Faith Gibson. My greatest lesson learned 
is about generosity, about being generous with our kindness, with our time, with our knowledge and intelligence. And it reminded me of a ward sister I worked with. I saw very much generosity in spirit. I saw that as a great leadership skill and one that I wanted to emanate. And I hope that I have done. Nick Hardiker. Good healthcare relies on good information. The nurses must play an active role in ensuring that the information they provide is as good as it can be. My research is about ensuring that nurses consistently record their observations and interventions, and it's about ensuring that the nursing contribution remains visible. Sonia McElfatrick. Why I consider it to be a great honour to be selected as a Fellow for 2020 is that it gives both recognition to my role and contribution as a nursing leader globally, but also the opportunity to work alongside other nursing leaders across the world and to help advance and support the mission of the American Academy of Nursing. Geraldo Javier Melendez Torres. My research focuses on developing the methods that we need to answer the questions that matter, that matter to patients, to families, to communities, and to populations. As a nurse, I believe that we can have a future without health inequity, without violence against women, and where each child has a fair and equitable shot. I believe that nursing's role is at the front lines of these struggles. Utah. Gwen Latondres. I've spent most of my career as a nurse and a nurse midwife working with childbearing women and more recently as a researcher and an educator, it's humbling to realize that my work in Utah alone positively impacts over 50,000 women each year who give birth in this state. This is an example of how I had hoped I would be able to shape the public's health in the future. Julie Valentine. Welcome to the Wasatch Mountains. When I think of how I want my work to impact public health policy, I think one, I want my work to illuminate the knowledge about the negative effect of trauma on people's health. And two, I want my work to decrease sexual violence. Barbara Wilson. We can and will affect policy and healthcare agencies whose decisions directly will affect the care we provide. Um, it's remarkable that this year, 2020, marks the 200th birthday of our founder, Florence Nightingale. I hope that she would be pleased with the prominent role that nurses play in policy and health care throughout the world. Vermont. Anne Outwater. A lesson I learned is the importance of research. A regret in my career is that I cannot communicate my experiences in Sri Lanka very well. I learned that if you do not have data, you can hardly talk about your work. You hardly know what you accomplished. Good research makes a strong story. Virginia. Catherine Cox. I have always wanted to have a body of work that contributed to our profession. And as a Navy nurse and as a veteran, I am thrilled that the Academy has formally acknowledged my leadership in advancing the science of military nursing across multiple domains, research, education, and policy. Jennifer Hatsfield. I have learned in my career of the value of those who have gone before us, that we really do stand on the shoulders of giants. I think it's up to us as the Academy to set up the next generation for success. Christine Pabico. One of the most important lessons I've learned during my career is the importance of nurturing relationships and partnering with others to have a collective impact. We can achieve so much more when we share resources and augment each other's work when trying to accomplish mutual goals. Plus, it makes it so much more fun. Pamela Parsons. 
I hope that the work that we complete through the Richmond Health and Wellness Program and at Virginia Commonwealth University will improve the future of public health nursing by demonstrating the impact of taking caring into the community at or near where individuals live, work, and play. Catherine Ratliff. How do I hope my work will shape the public's health in the future? Through advancing clinical practice in my specialty area, through institutional excellence and sharing that practice with others outside my institution. Washington. Bonnie Bowie. The nursing profession has a long and rich history of positively influencing healthcare policy and patient outcomes. And I am very proud and honored to be, have the opportunity to work with AAN members to advance health policy and practice and to improve access to equitable and affordable care. Shelley Fritz. I hope that in the future, all people with chronic conditions will receive a smart home. I envision all providers integrating smart homes into their practice and using this untapped information to better understand how people are responding to their illness between office visits. Renee Hoaxel. I am firmly convinced after a nursing career that has spanned over 50 years, that there is nothing that the collective strength of nurses cannot accomplish. When there is unity of purpose, teamwork and trust amongst nursing colleagues, significant barriers can be overcome. Tatiana Sadak. As a researcher, clinician and educator, my mission is to transform the education of healthcare professionals by fully integrating specialized knowledge that too often exists in isolated silos. And to leverage my fellowship at the American Academy of Nursing to strengthen the collective impact of nurses in dementia health policy. Kukab Shishani. AM Selection Committee, my work in Jordan Oman, Uzbekistan, and in the U.S. is translation of my philosophy of life. Sharing knowledge and skills contribute to building bridges between nations and opens new avenues in contributing to human knowledge collectively. West Virginia. Laurie. Tiki. My work focuses on the realities of loneliness as a prevalent and significant health problem. I'm hopeful that my work will shape the public health's future by diminishing the stigma of loneliness, recognizing it to be a stressor that leads to health decline. My work has the potential to be transformative, leading healthcare systems to take on screening, prevention, and treatment programs for loneliness. Wisconsin. Mary Beth Kingston. One aspect of my work has focused on improving workplace safety and health care. My hope is that we can continue to create healthy work environments, recognizing that this not only affects the well-being of all health care team members, but also impacts safety and quality care for all. Mary Muse. I will use my expertise and experience to inform and shape public policy and standards in correctional health. The aim is to improve the quality and care delivery of correctional health care. Correctional health is public health. Linda Young. So sharing and developing knowledge, uh, mentoring and building community, and investing in ideas that I'm passionate about uh, have all been fueled by the, the desire to grow and learn throughout my profession. And I look forward to the growing and learning that I'll be doing as a member of the Academy.
Our final honorary fellow to be celebrated this evening is Aaron Michan, the executive director of the Rita and Alex Hillman Foundation. Consistent with one of the Academy's signature initiatives, the Edge Runners Program, Mr. Michan champions the need for and spirit of innovation. Mr. Michan has challenged nurses in practice and education to drive changes in healthcare through innovation and design thinking during his tenure at the foundation. This includes the creation of the Hillman Scholars Program in Nursing Innovation, an integrated BSN to PhD program designed to produce the next generation of innovative nurse leaders. The foundation's grant programs focus on innovative ways to serve the economically disadvantaged, racially and ethnically underserved groups, LGBTQ communities, rural populations, people experiencing homelessness, and other vulnerable populations. It was my pleasure to hear more of Mr. Michan's perspectives on how the pandemic has shined a light on the need for the profession and how his grandmother's vision led him on his creative journey to support the nursing workforce. Hello, Aaron, and let me again congratulate you on becoming one of our 2020 Honorary Fellows in the American Academy of Nursing. I'm thrilled that you are able to join us this year in my presidency. It's a pleasure. As we think of our conference theme, what advice might you have for our fellows as they work on their own resiliency and lead with purpose? Well, it's a great question. And let me begin by saying, um, I'm just so honored um, to be inducted into uh, an organization that is home to so many of my heroes. So this is really um, such a great honor. Um, as far as advice, um, I'm not sure that I have anything to impart and certainly no lessons as I think that the challenges of leading a philanthropy through tough times is several orders of magnitude easier than anything that nurses have had to contend with over the past seven months. Um, that said, I find leading with purpose in times of crisis significantly more straightforward than periods of calm because purpose presents itself with such clarity. I mean, there's, there's a fire that needs to be put out. You need to help those uh, in need. You save as many lives as you can. You safeguard the people you work with. Um, the resilience piece, however, that's, that can be the tough part because it requires that as leaders, we prioritize and role model taking care of ourselves. Um, and that can be really hard when the crisis is acute, when we feel like we need to be on call 24 hours a day, and when the world's troubles seem so much greater than our own. Um, and this, of course, nurses know all too well. Um, certainly, it's impossible to lead effectively when you're burnt out. Um, so it's really important to maintain our mental and physical well-being during trying times, to sleep, to find moments of restoration wherever we can. Otherwise, uh, no matter how strong our sense of purpose, we'll never muster the energy required to get us through the long haul. Uh, so I think we all need to, to take care. You know, uh, Aaron, I knew and had the opportunity to meet your grandmother several times, Rita Hillman. And um, her interest in nursing um, really was quite remarkable. And for the Reed and Alex Hillman Foundation to do the work that they did to support quality education and um, support the nursing workforce. What kind of inspiration have you drawn um, from that? So as you uh, look at how your foundation continues to move ahead uh, throughout uh, the country. You know, my grandmother, she believed so fiercely in nursing as a tool to change the world. I think that resonated for me at a young age and continues to inspire me today. Um, and so when I took over stewardship of the foundation uh, well over a decade ago, I, I saw an opportunity to build on her vision. Um, and what seemed to what seemed clear to me at that time was that nurses were one of the great untapped resources in healthcare, um, especially in terms of innovation. I, I don't think anybody is better positioned to understand the crucial nexus of the healthcare system uh, and the needs of everyday people. And, and so the foundation and I have spent 
uh, the last decade trying to advance nursing innovation as a powerful instrument of change. Uh, we've developed initiatives like the Hillman Scholars Program in Nursing Innovation and the Digital Design Thinking for Health platform that we help will cultivate a new generation of nurse leaders and innovators. Um, we've also invested, as you know, um, in supporting nursing-driven innovations that target the needs of vulnerable, pop, uh, vulnerable populations, mm -hmm. those who have been uh, marginalized, oppressed, and otherwise overlooked. Um, and we've done this by creating a relatively unique ecosystem of grant programs that support work all across the innovation continuum from nascent work, uh, pre-evidence efforts to established programs that are seeking to scale up. So I'm, I'm very, very proud of the work that we've done. And, and I have to say, I'm deeply grateful to the many nurses who have helped to shape um, our priorities. We're all familiar with this um, reputation that nurses have for being masters of the quick fix. And I think it doesn't take too great a leap uh, in imagination to see nurses moving from masters of the quick fix to being intentional designers of systemic change. And I think to, to get to that place, it just requires both a willingness um, in nursing academia to implement the kind of curricular changes that are necessary to um, equip nurses with the skill sets that allow them to be designers and innovators. Um, but I also think that it requires work to develop the sort of culture change that's necessary so that nurses, particularly young nurses, um, see themselves as designers and not just um, sort of quick fix artists. Um, I think that if we can empower them early on to see and appreciate the full breadth of what they're capable of, I think that that's um, an important first step. And I'm, I have to say that I'm, I'm really heartened um, by the efforts um, that are taking place around the country at, at a variety of institutions um, to advance that work. So true. It's been wonderful to be able to talk with you today, but I know that your ability to listen and quietly listen forces us to always think more clearly and also more deeply. So while you say you don't give us advice, your listening has always drawn it out from us. And it is so wonderful and important to have uh, friends and supporters like yourself. So once again, um, my deepest congratulations and warmest regard and welcome to the Academy. Thank you. Thank you. This has been an incredible evening. In the face of a global pandemic, we heard how the science, innovation, and leadership of nurses rise above any obstacle. While our celebration was virtual, I sensed the connected presence of families and friends cheering on the newly inducted fellows. We all know that without our loved ones, closest mentors, and vocal champions, this night would not have been possible. 2020 is not over yet, as we have much work ahead of us to ensure we continue to strive for our vision of healthy lives for all people. Now, with 230 new fellows of the American Academy of Nursing, our progress toward that goal is within closer reach. And to each of our new fellows, welcome, welcome to the Academy. Academy.